This is Way 31 Law Call. Good evening and welcome to Way 31 Law Call. I'm Sharon Doviet. Tonight we're devoting the show to veterans benefits. We have so many veterans in our areas. We're going to focus on things like veterans benefits, what to do if you have filed with the VA and you're having difficulties getting them to respond. We will talk about how to appeal if you have been denied your claim for veterans benefits. We will also talk in the second half about security clearances uh, that are required for so many jobs in our area on the arsenal and local missile defense industry jobs and many of those jobs go to veterans. Michael Timberlake joins us tonight from Timberlake Lee and Brooks. Good to have you here. No, it's great to be here. So veterans, we got a lot of veterans in our area. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's amazing how many veterans and what they do for our community yeah. and we really want to show our respect for them. There's nearly 40,000 military veterans that reside in uh, the Tennessee Valley and wow. Huntsville area, which is just amazing. Um, it's 11% of the total population or 25%. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, and, and, you, and it comes from every generation, you yeah. know, all kinds of uh, veterans, 25% of local vets are from the Vietnam era, wow. um, but you still have a lot of veterans that are, that are here that are still uh, contributing to our society and doing great things for us, and we really appreciate their efforts. And we've got a great expert to talk about things. And, yeah, tonight, and that's, Ron. that's why we bring our, our, our veteran friend, Ron Siskas, on. This, he, he, he is the guy when it comes to veterans' benefits or all things veterans. So we appreciate you coming on. Well, I appreciate you having me. Good to see you both. Yeah. He does some bankruptcy on the side, too. Right, but I do. What, what services do you provide that our veterans ought to know about? Sure. Uh, we do VA disability claims okay. uh, and also any type of security clearance issue. Uh, whether it's questions about your situation or you're losing your clearance and everything in between. Perfect. All right. We've got some questions for you. Okay, uh, we, we had a, a question written in. My elderly father served in the military and now he is in a nursing home. Is he entitled to any VA benefits? Yeah, so, so he might be. So there are two type of, types of VA um, uh, th concepts that folks want. Service-connected disability, that's the more lucrative one, okay. that's the, the one you hear. And for that, you have to be a, a veteran, of course, and you have to have a current disability, and it's got to be related to your service. That's the service connection, like, you know, you were running PT, physical training, and you hurt your knee, okay. you know, that's your service connection. Okay. But in this context, the other, it's less attractive, but it's still attractive. There's a pension, and it's a, it's a wartime pension, and it is set up for, um, it's, it's needs based. You have to fall under a certain threshold. But you know, if you've got an older or an elderly veteran who, uh, and this is the kicker, who served uh, during wartime, and, and I like to know that, or throughout the state, be, between, before September 8, 1980, if you served for just 90 days, at least one of which was during a time of war, uh, so that's a lot of the Vietnam veterans you were yeah. mentioning. You didn't have to be in the war. You could be okay. stateside. You could be, you know, skiing and you hurt your, you know, you, okay. you, you didn't have to be in war just as our country was at war. So Good. there's a, under this pension, it's something to look at if you have an elderly parent who's a veteran, you know, and you need help and, and maybe that person's in a nursing home. If you're older than 65, again, it's needs based, but, you know, and you want to be careful about transferring assets and all that. That's a little above what I want to get into okay. here. So just okay. be careful with that. But it's needs based. But if you are um, if you are over 65 and or in a nursing home, and you may qualify for a pension, it's something to look at. I mean, you know, you're probably talking twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars a month, which in this day and age will go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's it's important. It's important benefit because um, you know. Medicare does not pay for long-term right. care in a skilled nursing facility. So if you're you're a veteran, you have an opportunity to get the government to offset some of the cost of that. That's that's great. Um, if you qualify for Medicaid, you have to have a, a monthly income of less than two thousand dollars, and then they may pay for skilled nursing care. Um, but that's certainly something that veterans uh, who have more assets than that want to look into to see if they can offset some of the cost of that care. Okay. Question from Bob. Bob says, I have a claim pending for my VA disability. It's been several years and it seems like nothing's happening. Is there anything I can do to speed this up? Years? Yeah, Is so that common? I, I get this question a lot. Probably, I have clients now that I've been representing since 2010 for VA claims. Oh my. We're still in, we're still slogging along. Wow. And uh, so yeah, it's a, is any, any veteran knows this uh, phrase, hurry up and wait. So you heard it in the military when you were on uh, active duty or reserve duty, and it's the same way with VA. 
uh, hurry up and wait, and there's nothing you can do to speed it up. What's going on in that length of time? What are they, <laughs> what are they waiting for? You know, I wish I could tell you. So there is a there is a way to speed up a claim if you're 74 and in dire oh. straits. You can ask the VA to speed it up, but you can imagine everyone who's 74 and older is yeah. already asking, so it really doesn't change anything. Yeah. So yeah, it's just kind of the unfortunate. I don't know if it's an unfunded mandate, but you know the the VA has a lot of work to do, so they they do it as they can. So yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's, I mean, yeah. It's, that's incredibly unfortunate yeah. because these people deserve better attention right no and that's a fair statement now how do you think my clients feel when I give that and yeah. I give that uh, oh that's I give hard that, news well and I have my clients often. that are they're like it's been 18 months since a car wreck right, and I'm right. like well that then that's right. that's not right. unusual yeah. but years and years yeah, is, it's a long time it's, it's not fair okay we've got a question I think I have a claim for the VA but I'm not sure what I should do how should I go about this can you if you think you've got a claim, do you need a lawyer to get no, started? No, not at no. all. In fact, I won't even take on a, a VA case unless someone has been denied. Okay. You know? So no, and every veteran, I always tell this to veterans, you know, every veteran knows his or her disability or his or her problem. So now we're talking, I talked a little bit about the pension, that's a needs-based program. Yeah. Now we're talking about service-connected disability. So you have to have been on active duty. It's got to be on active duty orders and you get hurt in some form or fashion. Okay. And you know, you, so you have to have a current disability that's got to be related to your service. And where folks get, so, so I guess the, the short answer is people can file their own claim. Every veteran knows if he or she has a claim, they know what it is. Okay. And you know, you have, there are ways to go about proving it. You know, obviously the closer to your service that you file a claim, the better chance you have. But you know, a lot of times that doesn't happen and veterans wait 10, 20, 30 years to uh -huh. file a claim. But you, you know, and the, the issue always will be for the VA service connection. You may have this cancer, you may have a knee problem or a back problem. Why is that related to your service? And here's what I tell folks. If you have a doctor that can write a statement, it's called a nexus letter. A doctor that says, you know, it's at least likely as not that Ron's knee problem occurred while in service that's very good I mean that's very helpful and also buddy statements so at our website I, I've got a lot of information under our VA blog of what you do, can do to improve your claim so buddy statements like uh, if you had sleep apnea and you're sleeping in a, uh, in, a you're in a barracks and you know, uh, you know if you and I were sleeping in a barracks and I'm keeping you up because of my sleep apnea <laughs> I'm gonna say <laughs> Michael, wrong, yeah, for write sakes. a statement that says this happened you know that hey, that's, some, that's something they're gonna remember yeah yeah other, I mean, in terms of, of, you know, where to go to file the claims logistically, I'm sure there is some kind of, you know, portal on the internet. If you're not internet savvy or computer yeah. savvy, what do you do? You can do it through the VA proper. So here's what I tell folks. And again, if you look at our website, it's at bondandbotus.com. Go to the VA. We have a blog. Go to under the VA tab. I talk all about this, what to do to improve a claim and, or what you should do. So if you file your claim, Keep track of it. I always tell folks, get a big box. Anything you send to the VA, you should make a copy of, put it in your box. Anything you get from the VA should go in that box. Keep everything, because if you don't, invariably, it's like, any, as lawyers, if you don't capture evidence when you got it, it's uh -huh. forever gone, right? Sure. Uh -huh. And the same, same concept applies to, to these VA claims. Um, keep track of everything you send. Send it by certified mail, oh, return good. receipt. Yep. Because I, I can't tell you, that's what we do even with our stuff for our veterans, the number of times the VA says, well, we never got that. You didn't timely <laughs> file something. And, and I'll also say with these veteran claims, you've got a very short window to act. You've got, when you file a VA claim, if you're denied, you've got one year to act. And, and if, that year, if that year goes by and you file it on day 366, the VA will always say to you, you, your claim is final and unappealable, it died, best of luck to you. Now, there are certain things you can do to try to reopen it, but that's an act of Congress. I wouldn't mess with that. Don't, Don't miss it. the deadlines. And then, if, um, as you go on in the process, there's even a 60-day deadline. I, I won't get into that now, but be mindful of those deadlines. Will it say it pretty clear? It's it's on there, read what you it get. It is, but it's it comes up fast. Okay, so. yeah, 60 well, days. And, and I think one of the most important things is, is that people understand that we kind of expect as lawyers that these claims are gonna be denied right. for one reason or oh, another yeah. right off the bat. 
Um, so if you file one and you don't have a lawyer and you get denied, that doesn't mean that your claim doesn't have merit. It just means for some technicality or some reason uh, that they're denying your claim. And that's kind of the way they look at them is if there's an out, they're probably going to take it. So what you need to do is make sure that you, you keep track of the appeals process um, and then talk to Ron or somebody that's uh, engaged in this process um, to make sure that you presented all the information because it can be something minute that causes your claim to get denied. It can, but, but I kind of, as I always tell most veterans, expect a denial. It's almost like Social Security, right? right. right? Yeah. Expect a but denial. But when you get that denial, it's not the end of the road. It's not. It's not. And in fact, I mean, that's, that's why I'm with a lot of these veterans, you know, for the long haul because we usually okay. can get... You know, I have veterans going back a decade that were at zero percent and now are at a hundred percent. Okay. And it's not, you know, because of any magic, but you just kind of stay dogged. You get the doctor's letters like I talked about. You get the buddy statements. And I always tell veterans in this day and age, again, with Facebook, find your buddy. I'll give a quick example. So I was at Fort Bliss, Texas, and I'm not a great runner, but I like to run long distance. And I had a buddy that would run with me. We'd run like two hours. We'd run an hour out. So we were in, in El Paso proper. I fell, inartfully fell an hour out, skinned my knee really bad, completely bloody, and I, we had to walk back. So if I were to file a claim for my knee now, uh -huh. I would reach out to him. I would even tell him, here's what you need to write. We were running, remember you were complaining. Remember that, And friend? remember I couldn't do PT for a month because my knee was all messed up. That's, it's perfect, and it's, yeah. it's true, and it's, you, know, you can find people like that. Good. We're going to take a quick break. Be right back talking about veterans claims and next up security clearances. Stay with us. You're watching Way 31 Law Call. Your rights, your calls, live. Presented by the Tennessee Valley's award-winning personal injury and wrongful death law firm, Timberlake League and Brooks. Featuring the knowledge and experience of Attorney Michael Timberlake, Attorney Will League, Attorney Heath Brooks, Attorney William Maservi, and hosted by broadcaster and family law attorney Sharon Doviet. This is Way 31 Law Call. Welcome back tonight. We are focusing on veterans, benefits, and security clearances because so many people that are working in security clearance jobs. Our veterans uh, have, been, have been in service. Thank you very much for your service. So we've got with us tonight Michael Timberlake from Timberlake League and Brooks. They're personal injury attorneys. And Ron Sixtus, who does bankruptcy cases and a variety of things, but specializes and uh, is unique in our area to have somebody who does veterans benefits and deals with security clearances. So thank you very much for what you do. Oh, thank you. We've got questions. We've, it's starting, we're talking about security clearances now. A question written in, I'm filling out the form to get a security clearance and I'm nervous about what I put down. I'm not sure if I should list some of the things in my sure. past. Everybody's well, got something, right? Well, I'm not, I'm, I don't have a security clearance and I'm worried and you, about and you're still in worried. my past. Like, you're still you're worried. nervous. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the form we're talking about, for most folks, um, there's two types of clearances that, well, really three types. There's a confidential clearance, like if you're a gate guard on the arsenal, you generally fill out, or if you're working welding on the arsenal, you fill out what's called an SF-85 or an 85P, and that's a public trust clearance. So the more daunting thing that most folks in our, in our viewing area are used to is the uh, SF Form 86. And it's through this weird uh, EKIP uh, portal, this computer portal. Everyone knows it as EKIP or SF-86, but it is a 127-page document. <laughs> Five pages are the instructions. No way. One of the, and one of the provisions is section, you know, the uh, the lying, uh, the, the United States Code, 18 U.S.C. Uh, 1001. If you lie to the government, this is a government form, punishable to an, up to a $250,000 fine or five years in jail. Everyone sees that and freaks out. So, That'll get your attention. But, right. But here's the thing, what I tell folks. I've never seen anyone prosecuted for lying on the okay. form, but okay. the penalty is you lose a clearance or the clearance is denied. And I always tell folks, lying on that form, if you're caught lying on that form, um, you, in all likelihood, you'll never get a clearance. Never, ever. If you obfuscate, okay. if you, I have a blog post I wrote about this that said, if you dance with the truth here, you, and you're discovered, so that's the second part of that, right? Yeah. If that's discovered, um, you know, you may never get a clearance. You know, and I've had clients, you know, it, I'm not going to say it's insurmountable, I mean, that you can't get past it, but boy, that's tough. 
But they're going to ask about drug use, Everything. right? So, so Mar here, here's one of the marijuana. questions. Have you used illegal drugs in the last seven years? Have you ever gone into any type of uh, drug treatment? Um, depending upon what psychological or mental conditions are, they're going to get your medical records. And I've had clients that didn't, you know, th in their medical records, they divulged they did X and Y. Yeah. And then now here on the form, they didn't disclose they didn't say that. It. So it can be real tricky. I always tell folks when you're answering the SF-86 or 85, um, be cautious, be thoughtful about it. I've had people rush it. I'm like, this is not the time to be haphazard. Okay. Take your time. You know, I help out with, with answering the questions because there are ways to mitigate the government's concerns, whether okay. it's financial, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol. Um, you know, there are things you can do, but you've got to be thoughtful here. Because if you're caught, you know, it can be a problem. Don't a lie problem. and don't omit. Yeah. Right, right. You know, and like the, 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 the stakes aren't as high in a personal injury case, but that's one of the things that we do with all of our clients. We look and say, look, you know, what type of injury have you had? Have you had any treatment in the past? And then we'll go look and, and, and you know, and get either hospital records or GP records um, from the, the client. And sometimes there's, there turns out to be things that the client didn't recall, didn't remember. And it's, it's not a, you know, you know, intentional mistake, but it's just one of those things uh, that comes into play that they forgot. Uh, so, you know, that's an, an avenue. You want to make sure that everything you provide to them, you know the answers to. I see that with judges, too. Yeah. You know, don't lie to the judge. Right, right. <laughs> they, it will not <laughs> yeah, end well right. if you lie to the judge. Right. Better to tell them something bad right. than to lie. Right. You want to give this next yeah, question? So, so what happens if your, your clearance is denied? We talked about this with the appeals right. on, the, on the disability. But if your clearance is denied, it, that's not a permanent finding. You can you know, go back and reapply, yeah, right? No, that's a good question. So yeah, you can reapply after one year. If you go through the whole what's called a DOD adjudication process and it's denied, you've got to sit out for one year. But you can reapply. And a lot of times people call me, hey, I want to get a clearance. And that's not how it works. You have to be sponsored for a clearance. Some entity, whether it's uh, you know your employer, or the government, um, has to sponsor you for a clearance, put you in for a clearance, and that's really the critical thing. So if someone's been denied for a clearance previously, sometimes it'll be hard to get a sponsor. I've had clients volunteer at UAH, for instance, and just be you know in a non-paid status, but just to get through the process yeah, again. So it's not you know that's the point. It's not a forever thing. That's How good. do they That's pay fair. you? How do they pay you for helping them with security clearance things? Is that a flat fee or hourly? How's sure, that I do. I do a flat fee that I cover folks for a year. Okay. And I always tell folks I've got. I do these cases nationwide since it's administrative oh, yeah. law practice, and uh, I've got all I can handle. So I'm like, well, the goal is to kill it at the lowest possible level. <laughs> that benefits them, and you know it doesn't hurt me. So. Good. Okay, we got this question. I have a security clearance, but I have some debts that are past due. Could I lose my security clearance because of those debts? And you do bankruptcy law, law too, so if somebody right. gets a bankruptcy, is that they're going to sure. lose a clearance? Sure, and you know what I tell folks with clearances? The number one reason why people are denied clearances or lose their clearances are finances. Oh. But, I mean, far and away, that's the number one reason. But it's also, I just told someone this today, um, it's the easiest thing to fix. Right, so if you if you have a clearance and you run into a debt problem, you know. So now everyone who holds a clearance nationwide is under what's called continuous evaluation. So the government has your credit reports at all times. Oh. So if you start falling behind, if you get sued, if you get a judgment against you, if you haven't self-reported it, that's also a problem. Uh. That's as, that's almost as big of a problem as the debt. But there are ways to deal with the debt. So yeah, can you file bankruptcy if you have a clearance? The the short answer is yes. Now, is the government going to want to see several bankruptcies over a lifetime? No. I tell folks, two bankruptcies in a lifetime, you know, be cautious. Make sure that last bankruptcy is what's called the Chapter 13, where you're paying back your debt. So if you show a good faith of paying back your debt, I mean, that goes a long way, in my experience. Now, um, you know, the other thing I, I see with, with financial issues is people failing to file their tax returns because now you have not honored United States rules uh, of filing <laughs> timely sure. tax returns. It's a big problem. Okay. Well, what, what if you have a, a new girlfriend named Natasha who's right, 25 right. years younger <laughs> than you? Right. And she's not an American citizen. Uh, yeah, you better report that. <laughs> 
You and and if that. you report something, I mean, what is the concern? The concern is that foreign, you're going to be blackmailed or something. Foreign influence or foreign preferences too. Yeah. So if you have a yeah, if you have someone from a from a foreign country, you know, now if it's if it's England that or Canada, that's different than if it's. Uh, you know, I've had a number of folks with, with Russian spouses or, okay. um, you know, a bunch of countries. I mean, yeah. uh, Korea, uh, Taiwan, you know, and if, if I've had people that have had, uh, you know, parents with, with military backgrounds in these countries, or sometimes parents will put, the, uh, put people on their bank accounts or on their land uh -huh. in one of these countries. And, you know, you've got to report it. And even if you report it, that gives the government concerns. They'll at least look at that. Gotcha. Sure. Okay, we got this question. The government is trying to revoke my clearance. And if I lose my clearance, I lose my job. How, what can I do to fight this? Yeah, and, and, and what are the most likely or the most common things you see when the government comes in? Sure, uh, drugs and alcohol. Well, finances, drugs, and alcohol. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, and then they, they have this catch-all. So <clears throat> it's kind of like a criminal case where they overcharge. So if, they, if they're charging for, let's say you had a couple DUIs, they're going to charge you for alcohol abuse, <clears throat> then personal conduct, which is this catch-all under guideline E, we're just worried about your conduct, and then also guideline G, J is criminal conduct. So it's, but it's all the same thing. All right. Okay. okay. And you, you fight them, you, oh, you yeah. take on those cases yeah, and, and fight them? Absolutely. Great. Yeah, and, and, you know, there is a way to approach this. A lot of the judges are former JAGs like I am. I mean, I kind of know, I've been doing this since I was on active duty, so I'm pretty comfortable with it. You're the guy. So. All right. We're going to take a break. Be right back answering more of your questions, talking about VA claims and security clearances. If we haven't answered your questions tonight about VA claims and security clearances, here's how to get in touch with Ron Sixtus with Bond and BOTUS. The number is 256-713-0221. Also, R-S-Y-K-S-T-U-S -S at bondinbotas.com. You can also check out the, on the internet, he says he's got lots of information, including blog at securityclearancedefenselawyer.com. Yeah, and Ron is the man. He's the guy to go to, for sure. Michael Timberlake with Timberlake League and Brooks, personal injury attorneys, 256-536-0770 or 800-804-2502. The website is law-injury.com. If you like them on Facebook, you can learn more about the law that way. That's everything from car accidents to medical malpractice. And Sharon does family law here in the Tennessee Valley. Divorce, child custody, modifications, 256-539-7337 uh, or SharonFamilyLaw.com. And the last look at somebody's writing in asking, I've been told I have to take a polygraph for my uh -oh. top security clearance. Should I be worried? Short answer is yes. Okay. No, no one wants to take a polygraph. I, I do tell folks here that uh, a lot of these top secret jobs will require a polygraph. You know, to what extent? Uh, the FBI, you know, since we have such a big FBI presence yeah. here, any FBI job requires a polygraph. And uh, just be careful. Go back to the SF-86. Make sure that's buttoned up and you're, you've answered correctly from there. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. Don't, don't lie. Don't lie. Thanks for your questions. We'll see you next week.